Hello, everyone. Welcome to my talk on our paper titled Your Walk Towards Walking Posture Identification Using Robots. This is a joint work by me, Jiang Nan, Professor Terence Sim from National University of Singapore, and Professor Zhong Han from Yonsei University. Have you heard of knee osteoarthritis for a knee OA? It is the most common form of chronic joint disorder that affects nearly one in four adults in the United States. And the prevalence of knee OA is still increasing, both in US and globally. So what is knee OA? Basically, knee OA is a knee joint disorder which leads to a loss of joint space that can absorb force of impact during the bones. So a loss of joint space brings bones into direct contact on the surface highlighted in yellow, and finally leads to knee pain. Unfortunately, walking can make the situation even worse. So when patients walk, there is always a force called the ground reaction force exerted by the ground. And this force can further transfer and apply to the knee joint. And the ground reaction force acts upon the lower part of the joint highlighted in red which gives it an inclination of rotation. And as you can see, such rotation further reduces the joint space and makes the lower part of the joint squeeze the upper part, putting more pressure on the knee joint and finally aggravates the knee pain while walking. So how to fix it? According to doctors, patients can simply modify their foot position to relieve the knee pain. Specifically, Suppose a patient originally walks with a foot pointing straight forward, then the doctor can train the patients to walk in a way where they intentionally point the foot inwards, which is called toeing, or point the foot outwards, which is called toe out, to relieve the knee pain. So when patients walk toeing or toe out, they're actually shifting the ground reaction force closer to the knee joint, which in turn induces less rotation, and as a result, part of the pressure is shifted to the left that has more joint space and prevent the already damaged side from exceeding pressure. This treatment seems super easy, right? However, training people to change their naturally selected walking posture is not easy. And how can we help patients with NEOA to train with a new walking posture? Doctors suggest to provide feedback during the training process and there are mainly two types of feedback systems used in both clinics and academic research. First is visual feedback. This kind of methods leverage treadmill, camera, or 3D motion capture system to measure the foot position and then visualize the measurement to the patient in real time. So the measurement is accurate. However, it requires expensive treadmill and motion capture system, and most importantly, it limits the training only in clinical settings. However, it's more ideal for patients to perform training in their everyday life. To overcome such drawbacks, doctors are thinking of using portable sensor networks to provide feedback. By attaching sensors on the lower lips or foot, the patient can actually walk around and get the feedback of their performance constantly. And these sensors are inexpensive devices. However, even with the advent of, of smart shoes or foot pods, the foot-worn sensors are still not widely available among public. So here comes our research statement. Can we utilize widely available smart devices to provide continuous feedback in non-clinical settings? So let me paint the picture. Imagine this patient is training to walk toe out, and the only device she needs is an earbud that is continuously sensing the head motion using the onboard accelerometer. Then the patient's smartphone retrieves the acceleration signals from the earbud via Bluetooth. And after analysis, the smartphone can inform the patient that she's walking her targeted posture, that is toe out walking. So in this talk, I'll actually show you that this is indeed feasible. So before we go on to our techniques, I'll briefly talk to you about how this could be possible. We already know that when we walk, there is a ground reaction force, and this force can transfer through the leg to the knee joint. And when we change our foot position to, say, toe out, 
the ground reaction force changes the direction. And these are the facts we already know from previous slides. Then if you know basic physics, the ground reaction force will produce an acceleration along the same direction according to Newton's second law. And which means that we can use accelerometer to detect the direction change of the ground reaction force. However, since human body is a really complicated system, we and even experts in biomechanics are not sure whether the ground reaction force will also transfer to the upper body and finally the head. In other words, to achieve the goal, we first need to answer the question, can your body capture the acceleration produced by the ground reaction force? To answer this question, we first conduct a feasibility study. We collect accelerations along three directions, that is X pointing forward, Y pointing upward, and Z pointing to the lateral side. And these figures show the row accelerations along Z direction for normal towing and tow out postures respectively. And as you can see, there are clear differences in the signal shape and value, which can actually justify the feasibility of our work. So now I'll show you how we can make use of the head motion to identify the foot position. Suppose Alice wants to use ear walk to assist her training process, and she first needs to go through the enrollment phase. And in this phase, we first collect row acceleration signals from each walking posture. And from this, we perform signal smoothing and select useful features, which is, is then cropped based on the periodic patterns to obtain signal segments. And from which we can extract common patterns in the profile generation module, and finally obtain walking profiles for each posture, which are then stored locally on the smartphone. After enrollment, Alice can start using our system in the identification phase. During training, your walk continuously capture acceleration signals and the row signals still go through the pre-processing and gate cycle detection, detection module to get the signal segments, and which are then compared with the stored profiles in the profile matching and majority voting module to get the final identified posture. And next, I'll introduce in detail how each module works in the enrollment phase. The pre-processing module takes as input the row accelerations along three directions, that is X, Y, and Z. And because all the three axes may contain parts of the useful information, so we want to combine them together. And according to our observation, acceleration Z has larger differences across three walking postures. Thus, we compute the weighted average and assign more weightage to acceleration Z for our implementation. Then we use the weighted average as our selected feature and perform analysis based on it. We know that walking is composed of multiple repetitive steps. And according to our observation, the selected feature also has periodic patterns, which may be corresponding to individual physical steps. So we design this gate cycle detection module to detect and crop the weighted average and finally, obtain multiple signal cycles from the signal sequence. And if you are interested in how we detect the signal cycles, you can read our paper for more information. After obtaining gate cycles, here comes a problem. Gate cycles generally have large variations in both the signal length and shape. So we want to extract common patterns from them in this profile generation module to remove the variations. Intuitive, intuitively, we can compute the average of the signal cycles and then keep the averaged cycle as a profile. But in our case, the cycles are of unequal length, which means that we cannot apply arithmetic average directly. To solve the problem, we use a dynamic time warping barycenter averaging algorithm to compute the average of gate cycles varying in duration. And next, I introduce to you the design of the modules in the identification phase. In the identification phase, row signals still go through the pre-processing and get cycle modules to obtain signal cycles. And then in the profile matching and majority voting module, we will obtain the identification results for each cycle. 
So in this module, given a new signal cycle and three working profiles for normal towing and tot postures, we compute the pairwise distance to measure their similarities. And the distance is computed using dynamic, dynamic time warping algorithm, since generally cycles and profiles are of unequal length. Finally, if D3 is the smallest, then we know that this cycle is closest to toe-out profile and comes from toe-out posture. However, according to our observation, for a sequence of eight cycles, there is always a small portion of cycles that are wrongly identified due to maybe unsteady steps. And to increase the identification accuracy, we further use the majority voting scheme to remove the outliers and output the identification results based on the mostly identified posture. So now we go on to our evaluation. We collect data on the treadmill and use an overhead camera to capture participants' food to get the ground truth of the food position. And we experiment with eight participants. All the participants walk barefoot on the treadmill at 3.5 km per hour. And the data is collected using essence from Nokia with the sampling rate roughly to be 100 Hertz. And we let participants to simulate normal towing and taut postures. And each posture consists, consists of 10 trials of simulation with each trial lasting for two minutes. Then for each trial, we randomly divide gate cycles into two groups for enrollment and identification respectively. And we first summarize your work's performance in a confusion matrix. The row, rows represent the actual working posture and the columns are the identified posture by our system. And each cell represents the ratio of identified cycles. So you can see your work achieves an average accuracy of 94%. And besides, we summarize individual identification accuracy in this bar chart. The x-axis represents each participant, and the y-axis is the identification accuracy. And from this plot, we can conclude that most participants achieve an accuracy over 90, 95%, except for P4. And we can find the reason by comparing P4's posture with other participants. And these four pictures are P1 to P4's foot position during towing and walking. And it is evident that P4 is not able to simulate towing significantly as other participants. So P4's low accuracy may due to the small difference between its normal and towing postures. Given this performance, we can discuss some deployment issues and future directions. First, we argue that your work will not pose much burden on the user even our solution is user specific and patients have to enroll before using our system. This is because training under the instruction of doctors is actually inevitable in the treatment. And we argue that the enrollment can be done at this stage. And besides, as demonstrated by researchers, subject specific gate training strategy is more effective and which also justify the use of subject specific solution. Next, I'll talk about several limitations of your, your work. Firstly, we still need more comprehensive evaluation as we control our evaluation in lab settings and also restrict participants' walking speeds and footwear conditions, which are likely to affect the gate signal. And besides, energy consumption is also important because the accelerometer has to continuously capture the head motion. And also, your work demonstrates the potential of ear bus in differentiating foot positions, but can only get cost spring results. It would be more helpful if we can measure the exact angles and we will take these limitations as our future directions. So in conclusion, your work is a system that uses accelerometer on your bud to identify normal towing and taut walking postures. And we hope this work can inspire communities research interest in more interesting for similar uses of commodity earbuds. And thank you for listening. I'm glad to answer any questions you may have.